I'm Heather Marie Montia, and you're watching PBS Books. Thank you for joining us. PBS Books is pleased to host a conversation with New York Times bestselling author and award-winning creator Vashti Harrison, who recently wrote and illustrated Big. This deeply moving story shares valuable lessons about fitting in, standing out, and the beauty of joyful acceptance. It traces a child's journey to self-love and shows the power of words to both hurt and heal. Well, as many people know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I think about the importance of social and emotional health for children. Honestly, I couldn't overlook how important this book is for all of our children. So let's meet the author and illustrator. Vashti Harrison is the number one New York Times bestselling creator of Little Leaders, Little Dreamers, and Little Legends. The illustrator of Lapita Noongo's Sue, Matthew Cherry's Hair Love, and Andrea Beatty's I Love You Like Yellow, among others. She earned her BA in studio art and media studies from the University of Virginia and her MFA in film and video from Cal Arts, where she rekindled a love for drawing and painting. Vashti lives in Brooklyn, New York, and invites you to visit her at VashtiHarrison.com or on Instagram and Twitter. It is my pleasure to welcome Vashti. Thank Hello, you so much. how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. We are so glad to have you back on the show. You were one of our first children's authors on the show, and we are so happy to have you in this space yet again with this amazing book that has just come out. I'm so so, <laughs> so am I. Um, what inspired you to write it, and why now? Well, this is a very different type of book for me. It is my first piece of fiction. Um, it is my first picture book that I've written and illustrated. Um, you know, I think the other books that I've written and illustrated came from a very personal place. Little Leaders was definitely filled with stories that I really needed to hear as a kid. And I definitely was thinking a lot about, um, you know, what what other stories do I need to kind of express and share with young people that I didn't feel like I had access to? Um, so as much as Little Leaders kind of spoke to um, the passions and desires I had for myself and my career and the things that I wanted to do, um, I really wanted to make something that spoke to how I felt as a child and some of the, the big feelings that I know that I was struggling with. Um, and, you know, I think illustrating is such an incredible tool and a means of expression that I don't know if I had access to in the same way when I was younger. So um, now that I'm at this age and place in my career, I really felt like I could go back and, you know, really examine a lot of those feelings and try to express them through pictures and, and make something that young people could use as potentially a guide towards, um, you know, entering this journey towards self-love or learning how to express themselves. So can you summarize the book in your own words? Like, tell us about it. Yeah, so Big follows the story of a little girl who's kind of experiencing some really big feelings about her body um, after an incident on the playground. She starts to internalize some of the negative words she hears from the people around her. And, and we follow her on a journey towards self-love, but on the way we really get to experience what she feels, how she feels it. Um, it's a story of the words that we say to one another, but it's also about innocence and black girlhood. Okay, so big is the name of this book. Can you talk about this word big, which for little girls especially changes in meetings over time, yeah. right? Little girls are, oh, she's so big. And then all of a sudden it hits an age, yeah. not good anymore. Can you talk a little bit about that word choice? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, I think I wanted to um, kind of 
challenge or ex- I guess examine this, the way we use these words when you're little, when you're really little, big is good. Big is something to aspire to. It's impressive. Um, and so you'll hear adults say things like, oh, you're such a big girl. You're a big girl now. And it's positive and it's good. But somewhere along the way, um, the world tells us something different, especially for girls that big is bad, that big is a problem, and being big is undesirable. Um, And so in this book, the the main character reclaims big and shows us that big can be a part of the person you become. It can be there right alongside big and graceful and kind and good. Um, And so I want that for the main character, and I want that for, I wanted that for myself when I was a kid, and I, I hope that that opportunity exists for other young people. Why did you choose not to give the little girl a name? Yeah, you know, the story comes from a very personal place. I really wanted to examine these feelings that I felt as a child. But, you know, she's not me and she's not any one specific person. And there are no specific conversations or experiences in this book. I really wanted it to kind of um, be a little more universal. I wanted it to resonate with people and let them kind of empathize with her experience. um, And hopefully it'll resonate with readers on a more universal level. So in the author's note at the end, your book discusses aspects of this book, as you've already alluded to in the interview, that they come from a very personal experience. Was there one thing that you included in this book that was, that actually happened to you or a few things that you recall? Yeah. I mean, the, the, incident on the playground actually did happen to me. And I I went back and forth and wondered if I should use this. I didn't know if like storytelling wise, it like properly um, accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. So as much as it it was important to me to kind of access this young part of myself, I, you know, I wanted it to, you know, resonate with lots of different people. So I didn't know if I was being too specific, Um, but I, I think it's really, you know, an interesting scenario that I think helps, um, I guess, sort of illustrate what it's like to to not fit in quite literally and to um, maybe feel like you're just wrong or doing something wrong. And I want readers to know that, no, you as a child, you there's nothing wrong with the way you look or the way your body looks. And I I want any young person to know that, you know, they should not be defined by what their body looks like or what it can or cannot do. Well, and the good news, I I think in some ways is that our society is embracing, right? There are dolls that are many different body types. When I was growing up, there was Barbie and she had blonde hair and blue eyes. And I clearly, you know, don't have either. And, and they also looked one way, right? And I think, so I think society, at least toys are working in in a way, but I still think those undercurrents are are very present, um, especially in, in different worlds. And you choose this little girl who wants to be a dancer, or she's dancing in this book. Why did you choose dance and not gymnastics or not something else? Why was dance your choice? Yeah, I think I specifically chose dance because ballet tends to be used as a symbol in in art history, in media, as something that represents um, beauty and innocence. And I wanted that to be the symbol for this child because as much as it's a story about her body, it's also about her being a black girl in our society. And so, you know, while I'm talking about some some heavier things, some bigger subjects like identification bias, I wanted to sort of uh, offer this level of, of sweetness and innocence that anyone who looks at this character knows that she is a child and she is deserving of this nurturing and care. So for me, um, ballet is sort of a shorthand for um, these really, you know, like the sweet, innocent kids who are taking those dance classes. Bashi, would you read some of your book for us? Yes, absolutely. So this is an excerpt from Big. Once there was a girl with a big laugh and a big heart and very big dreams. She learned her ABCs and one, two, threes. She always said please and thank you and even put away all her toys. At dinner, she ate all her food, 
what a big girl you are, the adults would say. And it was good. She grew and learned and laughed and dreamed and grew and grew and grew. And it was good until it wasn't. You're a big girl, aren't you? One day, something big happened. I can't wait for the recital. I'm going to be a rose. I'm going to be a daisy. OMG, ha ha ha, whale. Look, she's stuck. Moo, more like moose. Help. Don't you think you're too big for that? It made her feel small. The words stung and were hard to shake off. She began to feel not herself, out of place, exposed, judged, yet invisible. Everyone had advice. Hmm, that's no good. Try this instead. But that kind of hurt too. This is perfect for you. You're just too big. Veshi, I love, I love hearing you read this book and giving everyone a preview of, of your book. And I want to kind of look at some of the spreads. We're not going to be able to go through all of the spreads, but I thought we could start with one of my favorite spreads in your book, which is, I think of it almost as uh, a child's innocence, right? The little girl dances in words of kindness. It's you know, creative and good and free and compassionate and gentle and smart. And, and what's amazing to me about this book, is, this, this spread, this page is the movement and the activation and the joy, the pure joy. Can you talk about the creation of this spread? Because even in terms of the words, there aren't a lot of words of text up above. How did you decide what to put on this spread? Yeah, so the book starts in this really lovely and positive place and it goes someplace a little darker, but I promise it does come back to this place of, of love and kindness. Um, so I, I really encourage people to get the book and continue reading because um, the, the more exciting things happen right after that. Um, but yeah, I think what I wanted to capture in the beginning of this book is the fact that children begin their lives never thinking there's something wrong with them. They are given the opportunity to learn and grow and, and you know, try things out and become the person that, you know, one day they might become. So, I mean, my favorite thing about kids is like, you'll talk to them one day and they, with the utmost confidence, will tell you that they're going to be a veterinarian. And then the next day, they're going to, they tell me that they're going to be, you know, a mermaid, you know, so I, I love that freedom. <laughs> and I, I wanted to capture that, that utter joy that it is to be a, a young person and to just like, be full of creativity and full of life. So I wanted to kind of use color to do that. Um, so, you know, at the beginning of the spread or on the, on the left side, we see these lighter colors and it kind of fades into a more saturated version of this pink. And it's, for me, that showcases how this character is growing and growing into maybe something she she knows that she wants to become. So, you know, these words here, they kind of represent the things that she knows about herself. She's compassionate, she's caring, she's creative and she's smart and she's graceful. And so as she's growing, we're seeing more of this like definition in the color and her becoming who she wants to be. Um, and so I think, you know, what I try to do with the color throughout the book is to help it do have it do some of the storytelling because there are so few words. Um, I wanted to um, show visually a way that um, kids have this light, this excitement and this, you know, fire within them. And, you know, sometimes the, the unkind and unhelpful words we say to them can dim that light. Um, but it's, it comes from them. It comes from their, you know, passions and their utter joy. And so I want, you know, later in the book, she reclaims that and, and we get it back in a much brighter, more intense way. 
Um, so I think, you know, I was hoping to kind of visually showcase, you know, there are all these different opportunities that exist for kids. And, you know, I really hope that we as adults are empowering them and fostering that. Um, but, you know, I think it's up to every young person to, to not let one thing either negative, you know, be that negative negativity or not to define them. Well, you know, Vashti, as a parent of three, and I, when I was reading this book, I was really thinking also about this element of self, self-love that you're promoting throughout and how as much as a parent loves their, their child, that it doesn't mean that they have the confidence, right, to, to have that love. And that's why I actually thought this book was so important because it almost shows a, a kid how to internalize as you get to the end, how you internalize and and own it, how you own it yourself. Because I think, I mean, I remember my oldest, who's now 15, when he came home, his favorite color always was purple. And he came home and said, I hate purple. And I was like, what? He's like, my favorite color is blue. And I was like, well, what happened at school today? And right, and he was like, well, so-and-so made fun of me. I still remember that kid, <laughs> you know, but it, but you know, a five-year-old, right? And you think about from so young, they go from this creative, this love of life to this being self-conscious and how, as your book really clearly lays out, how to really promote this this self-love and acknowledgement of you are who you are and that's okay. And that's why, that's why I love your book. (laughs) I I just think it's amazing. So let's go to another spread because it's, one of the first spreads that you kind of know, hey, there's going to be some difficulty in here. You have, you know, your words are so until it wasn't. And down below, you have this cute little girl, you know, a dance fitting. And then, you know, the iconic sitting on Santa's lap where Santa's, you know, saying some words that maybe aren't as nice as one would think. And then just the every day standing in line and feeling like she's standing out. How did you decide on these three different scenes and to put them here to really jump into the difficult material? Yeah. So again, I'm not a dancer, so I've never had to do these sort of fittings, but I I remember that feeling of, um, you know, joining a group and needing a sort of costume and, and being a kid that knew other kids clothes couldn't fit me. Um, And so, you know, I, I remember it was, you know, a, you know, an uncomfortable feeling, but what I wanted to capture here is not necessarily how she's feeling. She's just wearing her tutu and she can just wear her tutu however she likes. She can wear it all day. Um, But, you know, I, I really wanted to capture, um, either the intentional or unintentional judgments that, you know, other people are placing on a young person, especially so young as they're just, just trying things out. Um, So that I think, I tried to capture that feeling. And again, with Santa, like he's not saying anything negative, not necessarily. Um, And so I really wanted to capture these feelings that these words that are either intentional or unintentional. Um, And so we don't know how it's going to affect people. And I, I like absolutely understand. I'm an adult. I get it. Like we don't always get things right. We make mistakes all the time. Um, But, you know, I really wanted to, um, you know, wanted to capture and explore what it feels like to move through the world with other people's labels on you. And so when, when these people are making comments about her and her body, you know, they're, they're, they're labeling her with something. Um, And so, you know, I don't know exactly how she's feeling in that moment. She could just be, you know, she maybe just wants to tell Santa about what she wants for Christmas. Um, but, you know, as she gets a little bit older, she becomes more aware of how other people are, um, you know, looking at her and defining her. Um, and and that, that spread of, or the spot of her in line, that definitely is something that I remember of feeling like, okay, I do feel different because I feel, I can see that I'm taller and bigger than the other people in my, in my classroom or when we have to line up to, to 
I don't know why we had to line up to go from class to class, but that's a thing that you do in elementary school, right? Yes, um, it is. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think the reason that these spreads have so few words is because to me, the feeling is so clear, but I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's a mixture of, you know, a kid just trying to move through the world um, and then things sort of shifting around her. And she's still trying to thrive. She's still just doing her thing. But, you know, I I see that her light can can easily be dimmed by other people. Um, yeah. It's and a very it's, internal story. It's not necessarily just about like insecurity. It's about, you know, the way that uh, the way that we move through the world and the way other people's words kind of affect us. Very reflective in a lot of ways. So there's another spread that I'm hoping we can talk about. And it's this little, you know, here she is looking in the mirror and how you're able to really depict so creatively how those words sting and that she can't shake them. How did you, you know, I, I'm kind of intrigued with your process here. You know, did you say, oh, did you write the words? Did you draw the picture and come up with the words? Like, how did this, how did this spread come about? I think I knew really early on that I wanted to use words in this sort of um, maybe physical way throughout the book um, to see them kind of flying out of people's mouths. And sometimes you can't control what comes out of your mouth. You don't realize what, what's coming out of your mouth and how it can affect other people. Um, so I wanted to be able to showcase that um, and how it's affecting her. I really wanted to focus on her perspective, and we see everything through her lens. That's why the world is sort of this, you know, hazy pink color. No one is a specific person. It's sort of the idea of another person. Um, but their words, you know, the words that are coming at her are sticking to her. And, you know, I remember feeling like I got told that I was too sensitive as a kid, that I should just let things go. But, you know, I just remember that feeling of not being able to, um, I don't know, not knowing how to process the words that I was hearing and them sticking with me. And so what happens later in the book is something that I wish I had known. And I, I encourage people to go and, and see what happens because she does something physically with the words. And and I, I think it's really important to know that you're allowed to reject negativity. You're allowed to call out something. If it does not, if it's not suiting you, you're allowed to say that this does not belong to me and I don't want it. I don't want to hold on to it and not let other people's words define you. But that idea of this image of her, of it sticking with her, it felt so natural. I don't even remember, like, I don't think there was an aha moment. It was sort of there with me at the beginning because I think, you know, I wanted the book to kind of feel a little bit meta and that the words come off of the page and they move around and um, they function in a really, um, you know, important way as if they're another character. Well, it certainly comes off that way. You did a tremendous job. One of the other slides that that just we can briefly talk on because we ended on it was the last page you you read. And it's it's this, you know, that she just won't fit and you're just too big. And you have done such an amazing job by showing this, you know, she's so big that she's or so upset that her movement is making holes in the floor. And I know when I was reading this with my six-year-old daughter, she pointed to that as, and really understood what was happening because of that part of the illustration. And I just want to comment that I think um, it's so creative. Like, like, how did you come up with it? Uh, to me, this one is a really literal feeling of like, again, like the teacher doesn't really know that they're saying anything wrong, or I guess this is the dance instructor, you know, and I don't think, you know, I'm not trying to sort of in, indict her, make her into a bad guy. It's just about like, at this point, the words are so heavy and they're just coming at her and they're kind of chasing her away. And she just feels like she wants to run away. And because she's already internalized these other feelings, like even running away feels kind of dangerous because she's scared of what kind of um, path she's leaving behind. Um, and I think that that definitely speaks to this sort of physicality of how um, when you feel like there must be something wrong with you, even even the desire for asking for help or trying to express yourself can feel like you're doing something wrong. Um, and so I definitely just I think that one was an obvious one for me because 
I maybe I've like felt that exact feeling. Also, I was very proud of how I drew those cracks on the ground. If you can ever zoom in or take a magnifying glass and look close, I was like, oh, these came out pretty good. They are pretty amazing. Um, well, for those of you just joining the conversation, I just want to remind you, I'm Heather Marie Montia. You're watching PBS Books, and we are here with New York Times bestselling author and also illustrator. Also, she's won numerous awards. Vashti Harrison, we are discussing her latest book. This is the inside cover all right, back to the conversation. So your book is very much about self-love. It's something that people, some people don't fully realize until adulthood. Um, where, and I guess you've kind of alluded to this, but at, at what moment in your progress as, as an author, writer, illustrator, did you say, hey, I want, I want to write this book? Was it something that was always back in your head or is it something recently that you really said, okay, I've been amazing. I've, I've had so much success with these books. Now I can do big. Um, I don't know if it was one specific thing. I definitely knew that I, my plan always was to make something um, fictional after Little Leaders. I don't know if I ever intended to become a person who wrote biographies. Um, but what was important about those books is they really spoke to a part of me that needed to hear those stories. So I think it made the most sense to make another kind of personal project. Um, and Big was a story that's been kind of floating around in my mind for a long time. Um, definitely visual. I, I had the images um, very clear of, of showcasing how you know the world kind of boxes girls in and and I wanted to you know, visually show a girl breaking free of that um, and not letting those labels define her. Um, I think there's a lot more um, literature and conversations today about how these journeys towards self-love. And I think it's something that I'm still working towards. It's, you know, it's new for me. Um, but I felt like when given the opportunity to write something for myself, I knew that I wanted to examine something internal before um, making something that was totally brand new and free. And I, I remember when I was writing the second book, Little um, dreamers, visionary women around the world. Um, I was reading about Toni Morrison and, and how she um, decided to write um, The Bluest Eye right in the height of the Black is Beautiful movement. And, you know, it seemed really, you know, sad and, and dark to write this story, but she wanted to examine where we had come from as a culture to get to where we are now. Um, so that story really examines um, you know, a child who doesn't believe that she's beautiful. Um, and so for me, as, a, as an artist or writer, I wanted to examine where I've been in the past so that I can reach to these new places of creating something for children. And, you know, I, I wonder, I spent a lot of time kind of agonizing, like, I don't know if this story is for children because it's something that is very adult and, um, you know, it's complicated, but, you know, I just think about, you know, how useful it would be, would have been for me as a young person or to be able to share that with other young people, um, this sort of roadmap on how to, um, you know, process our emotions and how to let them out and to let go of negativity, things that don't serve us. Um, so I think that as much as I, I worried, like, is this, is this the right thing? Um, you know, I, if it helps one person, I, I will know that I've done the right thing. I, I think it's going to help many, many young people um, and even probably some adults, both to think about what they've experienced, but also I think adults can be more reflective of what they say and how they say it. I also, I want to acknowledge that one of the you know, sometimes books have this really like happy moment where everyone realizes they did the wrong thing and like everyone's a big happy family now. You know, your book exposes that some people may never fully see that they hurt others. And yet what's amazing is the main character still makes peace with that. Why was that important to you to include? 
Um, I think as much as I want to give readers a roadmap and a tool for how to deal with um, or, or unkind words, I think it's important to acknowledge that not everyone has the ability to either confront people or do um, or or expect to have you know the result that they want. And I think I know that as of you know people in my own life and that each of these steps, that I make in the, my journey to self-love may not be visible to other people and it they're not necessarily dependent on other people. So as much as there, there's one thread that is really important, this, there's a spread that's before that where she kind of lets out all of the negative things and sorts through what she wants and what she doesn't want to hold on to and she lets them go. Um, and so for me, I think that is the most powerful moment in the book. And I think just acknowledging that, you know, some, there will be people who may never understand or may never be able to, um, you know, take accountability for their, their own negativity or unkind, unhelpful things. Um, I don't want any one person to be defined by, you know, someone else's inability to acknowledge that uh, because it is, you know, it's about your journey. At least I hope to empower kids with that, with that understanding. But, you know, I definitely would love for people to, you know, take away from this book um, ways to be more compassionate and nurturing towards children. Well, it's really interesting because in some ways, when I was reading Big, you know, your books, your, your, your little le leaders collection couldn't be more different on so many levels, right? They're nonfiction, they, but on some level, your books are empowering to kids. This book is empowering to kids as are those books in a very different way, but they're kind of letting both of your, all of your books are letting kids know in one way you can aspire to be anyone you wanna be, your little, your little uh, leaders collections. In the other way, this book is saying, whoever you are, you love yourself. You're right. Like you, it, it is, it's actually, uh, I hadn't thought about it until this interview. They both are just it, tremendously empowering. Um, and I just think they're really quite a gift for young people to be able to have both of them, even though they're very different in some ways, they, they, the underlying um, thread is the same of empowerment. Illustrations. Your illustrations continue to be, and especially in this book, are gorgeous. Can you talk about your creative process in illustrating the book and kind of the chicken and the egg? It sounded like you had some of these pictures in your head. Um, and then how did that work? Did you draw? Did you write the words? How did that go back and forth? With this book especially, I started with sketches. Um, I knew that I wanted something that felt really internal and really, you know, intimate. Um, so I wanted these this, to create a world that felt like we were fully within this main character's world. Um, I wanted it to feel a little bit dreamy in that, you know, we're not in a specific place. These aren't specific other people. Um, but I also wanted to kind of evoke that softness that we think of when we see like a, like a Degas painting of, of ballerinas and dancers, that softness, that delicateness of, of the dresses and the lighting. Um, and so I tried many different ways of illustrating, but um, I think I sort of landed on the mixture of, of digital tools, which I feel very comfortable with, but I really wanted to incorporate these soft textures of pastels. So I ended up separating it by doing these um, big washes of text of um, pastel textures and scanning them in and kind of creating new brushes and paint and drawing them and overlaying them onto my final work. I think something that I've tried to incorporate into all of my work, um, no matter you know, if it's a book that I've written or a book that I'm illustrating for someone else, I try to create characters that are sweet and in and just draw people in and make you want to, you know, go on an adventure and root for them. Um, so 
you know, for me, I always need to make sure that you can see the character clearly and, you know, really kind of create this emotional connection with them. Um, I think through this style, I was able to do that um, and kind of pull back a little bit and really just focus on her story. Vashti, do you have a creative habit? Is there something that you do in order to get into the mood to create? Um, you know, I think I have a habit of trying new tools. I don't know. I don't know if I'm always doing the same thing, but I'm always trying something different. And I think that's what gets me excited about making work is finding a new new way to express a character or a style. So, you know, I'll play around with collage and more recently I've been playing around with like three dimensional like sculptures and toys and things like that. And it really helps me to kind of um, approach a story from multiple different perspectives. So, you know, I did sketches in pastel for this book, but then I did sketches um, in colored pencil and then sketches in, you know, my computer and on my iPad. So um, the, the thing that I always turn to is like being excited to try something new so you know I might you know tempt myself by going to the art supply store and saying like oh well this is you know for my creative process these brand new tools that I'm gonna play with um so that's always that's what energizes me in my you know artistic artistic practice did you always know that you wanted to be a writer illustrator that your path would take you in that direction no, not at all. Um, you know, I, I tell the story a lot that you know, changed my mind so many times. When I was young and in high school, I, you know, I felt so scared that I was a writer that I, um, you know, I cried myself to sleep the summer before my senior year of high school because I didn't want to take the advanced writing class. If it wasn't for that, you know, I, I, the longer version of the story, you know, has a very winding path, but, you know, I changed my mind so many times. In the end, I found my way towards uh, making experimental films in, in college. And because I went to grad school to study experimental film, I went to this school that was famous for being like the Disney school of animation. And I was not in the animation program. I was off making films and I saw all of these you know, incredibly talented people um, drawing and painting and it kind of kindled a love I had for drawing and painting. So my path was so varied and winding um, that I couldn't have, okay, this is where I would have ended up. Um, but I think something I always knew about myself is I wanted to um, make art, but I didn't know how and I didn't know in what which way. Uh, you know, I, I forced myself to try so many other things on that path. But, um, you know, I'm so glad that I tried out, um, you know, different places for me to try to express myself. But I think I'm so grateful that I found a way here because I really love making work for children. I think all the things that I was doing before that were for other people or for myself. Um, so I'm so grateful to have, you know, found this. So what is your biggest hope that a young person will take away from this book? This book, for me, the most important thing for a young person is to know that, you know, they are deserving of nurturing and care no matter what, um, that, you know, also that like words are important. And I hope that, um, people will keep in mind how the words we use can affect each other. Um, but most of all, I want everyone to know that like they don't have to be defined by one thing and that you know your story can change, your story can evolve um, and you don't have to let anyone's negativity define you, but you can also, you know, you are the, the writer and creator and editor of that story. And so it's really up to you to decide um, what kind of person you wanna be. It's a great takeaway. What, um, what are you working on now? Something fun you can share? Um, you know, I don't have any 
book projects right now. I have another hair love book that's coming out later this year. So I just finished the illustration of that. But right now I am working on maybe writing something a little bit longer, but I am very, in the very early stages of that right now. Well, we will keep our eyes open for that fashion. And you'll have to come back on the show to discuss it. This has been such an incredible conversation. Um, thank you so very much. And I just really wanna thank you for all of your children's books. You're illustrating, of course, but the books you've written for our children, um, they are so empowering and it's such a gift. And so thank you for coming on to give us some insights into, um, into your process and your book and your thoughts. This has just been amazing. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Well, I'm Heather Marie Montilla. I want to thank all of the libraries and PBS stations out there for sharing this important content with all of you. Most importantly, we always want to thank you for joining us. Until next time, happy reading.